Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we continue solving problems um, on combinatorics. Very good problems and uh, I really like the combinatorics as a very good example of the mathematical problems which build your logic, build your analytical abilities. So, the more the merrier. Alright, so, um, today I just have a few problems, uh, six of them. Um, all of them uh, and the lecture itself are presented on the unizor.com website and that's where I suggest you to uh, to view it from. Um, there are notes for this lecture, it's right uh, on, on the side of the uh, of the lecture itself, of the video. Uh, the problems are presented in the notes as well and the answer. So you can first try to solve them yourself, that would be great if you do it and only then um, you could listen to this lecture. So it's very important for you to spend some time thinking about these problems before you view the solution. Because again, the purpose is development of your mind and the problem solving is the best way to do it. Okay, so without further ado, let's just do the problems. Okay, problem number one. We have to prove that for any natural n and k, number of combinations from n plus k by 2 and from a n plus k plus 1 by 2 represents a square of some number. All right. Well, this is a very simple exercise on uh, knowing the formulas. Now, I was talking about formulas in the previous lecture that you don't really have to remember them. You can always derive the formulas of combinatorics just knowing the uh, permutation uh, and factorial formula. Mm. So anyway, considering I know the formula and uh, I'll just use it right now because to, to prove it is really very simple if you know the formula. So this one is n plus k factorial divided by 2 factorial and n plus k minus 2 factorial. Now this one is um, n plus k plus 1 factorial divided by 2 factorial and n plus k plus 1 minus 2, so it would be minus 1 factorial. Well, obviously I have to bring them to the common denominator. Now let's just think about it. This one is 1 greater than this number, right? So if I will multiply both uh, numerator and denominator by n plus k minus 1, n plus k minus 1 n plus k minus 1 what I will have is n plus k minus 1 and n plus k minus 2 factorial will give me n plus k minus 1 factorial so I have a common denominator this now what do I have on the top. Well, let's just think about it. n plus k factorial is uh, all the numbers uh, multiplied uh, together from 1 to n plus k, right? So, uh, I think it would be beneficial for me if I will uh, use n plus k minus 1 factorial here. So these are all numbers from 1 to n plus k, k, k minus 1 uh, multiplied together. And n plus k. And n plus k minus 1. Now, why do I need it? Obviously, I want to cancel n plus, n plus k minus 1 factorial. Now, how about here? Now, again, I would 
have it as n plus k minus 1 factorial and then next one would be n plus k and next one will be n plus k plus 1 so now I can factor out n plus k minus 1 factorial and in the parentheses I will have n plus k times n plus k minus 1 plus n plus k times n plus k plus 1. divided by well 2 factorial is, is true actually right so I don't need factorial minus 1 factorial and now we cancel n plus k minus 1 factorial now we factor out n plus k and what would be uh, in the parentheses it would be n plus k minus 1 and n plus k plus 1 so it would be 2 n plus k divided by 2 so the result is n plus k square which is exactly what needs to be proven so this sum is n plus k square and the problem Next one. Okay. Next one is we have to solve the equation. Partial permutations from x by x minus 3 equals x times permutation of x minus 2 well again we have to use the formula which again I happen to remember now this one is factorial of the x divided by factorial of the difference x minus x minus 3 so it's 3 factorial now this one is x times x minus 2 factorial right now 3 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 it's 6 so we have x square uh, sorry x factorial equals to 6x x minus 2 factorial now what is x factorial is the product of all numbers from 1 to x and this is from 1 to x minus 2 so it's 2 less than to an x right so I can basically uh, say that this is x minus 2 factorial times x minus 1 and times x that's what x factorial is all the numbers from 1 to x minus 2 then x minus 1 and then x and this is equal to 6x x minus 2 factorial and now we can cancel this out we are not talking about anything equal to 0 in this particular case because it's factorials right but 0 factorial for instance is 1 anyway so we obviously are talking about numbers greater than 2, actually greater than 3. Um, maybe equal. That's the condition of this particular uh, equation. We have to really think about this this way. Um, otherwise we will have negative number, uh, which, which doesn't make much, much sense anyway. Now x is also cancelling out. So what do I have? x minus 1 equals 6, x equals 5, uh, sorry, 7, 7. That's the solution. So for those people who really need to make sure this is a solution, substitute it here. And what do you have? P from 7 to 4 should be equal to 7 times P5, right? So this is 7 factorial divided by 
7 minus 4 trifactorial should be equals to 7 times uh, 5 factorial. Well, let's just count. 7 factorial is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, which is uh, 5 factorial is 120, uh, 6 factorial is uh, 720, uh, and 7 factorial is, you have to multiply it by 7, 4, 50, I think that's what it is. And we have to divide it by 3 factorial, which is 6, 6, which is 8, 2, 40, 4, 4, 8, 40. So this is 8, 40. How about this? 5 factorial is 120 times 7, uh, 8, 40. Okay, so checking is fine. So the root of this equation is 7. That's the solution. Next. And obviously it's greater than 3. Okay, now we have to prove that number of permutations is equal to n minus 1. Number of permutations of n minus 1 and n minus 2. Well, this is probably one of the simplest problems, because on the left I have n factorial, right? On the right I have n minus 1 factorial, which is this one, plus n minus 2 factorial, which is this one. And I multiply them by n minus 1, which is equal to n minus 1. Now, what is n minus 1 factorial? You can write it as n minus 1 and n minus 2 factorial, right? Because this is all the numbers from 1 to n minus 2. And n minus 1 gives you n minus 1 factorial plus n minus 2 factorial. Now we can factor out n minus 2 factorial. And I will have this. And what do I have here? n minus 1 plus 1. So what do I have all together? n minus 2 factorial, which is this one, then n minus 1, which is this one, and then n. So which is numbers from 1 to n minus 2 and n minus 1 and n, which is n factorial, which is something which we're supposed to get. Simple. Next. Okay. Um, we have certain um, building, co-op building, and it has board of directors. Uh, so this cooperative has seven members of the board. Now, there are two positions which they have to basically choose candidates among themselves for. One position is president of the board, and the second position is, I mean, it's also one, not two. And one position, treasurer. Now, question is, now the rest, all other five people members of the board are just members of the board. Now, my question is, how many different distributions of responsibilities this board can have? Considering, you know, we have um, seven people and these two positions must be chosen. Well, there are many ways to do this type of, uh, pro this type of problem. For instance, um, we have seven different choices to choose a president, right? We have seven people so we have seven different choices to choose a president, so it's seven. Which, with each of those choices, we have remaining six people, and we have to choose one of those for a treasurer. And there are six choices, obviously. So that makes it 42. That's some kind of a pure logical explanation, without any formulas, etc. On the other hand, you can think about 
more like formal combinatorics. What does it mean to choose the president and the treasurer out of the seven people? Well, it means you have to really uh, uh, make choice of partial permutations of seven by two. So you have to choose two, but the order is important. Like the first one is a president, the second one is a treasurer. So you have to choose two people in certain order. That's what partial permutation actually is all about. And the formula is 7 factorial divided by 7 minus 2 factorial, which is 7 factorial divided by 5 factorial, which is 7 times 6, which is 42. And probably there are some other ways to approach this problem. But these two are sufficient at least. So we have 42. Next is a system of two equations, combinatorial equations, with two variables unknown. All right. Well, we have not solved linear systems of linear equation for a very long time since um, I was doing algebra lessons. So anyway, well, the, the, the easiest way to approach this is the following. Um, first of all, let's just do this type of new variables. Now, in this new language with new variables, I have something which is very easy to solve. Now, how can I solve this? Well, subtract from the first one, I subtract the second one, I will have 5v equals 50. So v is 10. And u is, if this is 10, this is 30. 66 10 I meant um, so 60 is that right 60 minus 20 40 60 plus 30 90 right okay so v is equal 10 u is equal 60 u is equal 60 and v is equal to 10. That's what we've got. All right. That's good. Now, let's just do it this way. x factorial divided by x minus y factorial equals 60. x factorial divided by x factorial and x minus y factorial equals 10. Okay, now let's compare one to another. What do we have? If I will divide this by this, my x factorial will cancel out and x minus y factorial will cancel out. This is 1 over x factorial, but we divide on this, right? So it will be uh, in the numerator, so I will have only x factorial. And 60 divided by 10 gives me 6. Well, that defines x. x is equal to 3, right? 3 factorial is 6. Well, once I have x, now I can actually use something like this. Um, oh, wait a moment. I think I made a mistake. This should be y factorial. Sorry. y factorial. So it's y is equal to Six, uh, 3. x factorial divided by y factorial and x minus... Yes, that's right. It's my mistake. Anyway, so if I divide this by this, I will have y factorial is equal to 6 and y is equal to 3. Correct. Now, since I know that y is equal to 3, uh, let's just do this job for, uh, for x. We can take any one of those two equations, for instance, this one, and substitute 3. 
So x factorial divided by x minus 3 factorial equals 60. Now, what is x factorial relative to x minus, uh, minus 3 factorial? Well, I can always write x factorial as x minus 3 factorial and x minus 2, x minus 1, and x, right? That's what will be my numerator. And now, obviously, I can do this. So, what do I have? I have x times x minus 1 times x minus 2 equals 60. Now, we definitely know these are integer numbers, positive integer numbers. So, we have three numbers in a row multiplied um, uh, give, give you 60. Um, well, you don't want to, 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 to solve the, the cubic equation, obviously. The best way is just to find a couple of numbers and think about these numbers are not supposed to be very large anyway. So let's say it's 5, 4, and 3. What happens? 5 times 4, 20 times 3, 60. So I just guessed, my, my first guess was x is equal to 5. So that's basically your best approach in this particular case. Considering the numbers are relatively small and you definitely know that these numbers are integers. So that's the solution. Okay, and my last problem today is, okay, you have two mailmen, and you have N, two people, mailmen, and you have N letters, which are supposed to be delivered to 10 different addresses. Now, they have to split the job somehow among themselves. Question is, how many different ways of this distribution of the job exist. Well, there are two different approaches to do this. Approach number one, basically we have to pick something, pick the job for one of them, and that actually defines the job for another, right? So, what kind of a job I can pick for the first one? Well, I can either choose for him to deliver zero letters out of the N, or one letter out of the N, or two, etc., or all n letters to be delivered by this particular person. Now, how many different combinations to choose zero letters from n? Well, it's c from n to zero. This is c from n to one. This is from c from n to two. So it's number of combinations of two letters out of n. So I have to pick two letters and say, okay, this is your job. Or I have to pick one letter and say, this is your job. So the sum of these give me the number of different job distributions among these two guys. So this is the answer. It's a very long formula, right? Well, but let's do it differently. Let's pick one letter out of this N and assign it to one or the other mailman. There are two choices, right? So we have two choices. Let's pick up another letter, the second one. Well, it's also two choices. And with each one of the previous choices, we can have each one of these choices. So I have to multiply the choices, right? And then the third letter, the fourth letter, etc. All n letters are, are, are supposed to be distributed among these two using the same logic. And obviously, since choices are multiplying, I have to multiply them. So it's 2 to the nth degree. Look at this formula. This is quite an interesting formula. Well, if you don't recognize it, I can tell you this is a Newton's binomial. So, if you use Newton's binomial, which I actually am presenting on unizor.com among the lectures on induction, I think it's the problem 1.6 in the in induction, that's from, from the beginning of this course, where um, uh, some math 
concepts actually are explained, in particular the concept of mathematical induction. So that's where actually I'm presenting uh, the binomial, Newton's binomial, and uh, and suggest the uh, proof of the formula by induction. So if you will open up this particular formula, binomial, uh, Newton's binomial, you will get exactly this. And this is 2 to the nth degree. So that's an interesting uh, confirmation, if you wish, of the Newton's binomial formula in case 1 plus 1. So the 2 to the nth degree is the sum of all these binomial coefficients, as they are called. Okay, that was my last problem. Um, I do suggest you to go through these problems again on the unisor.com website. Um, try to do it yourself and then read the solutions which I am providing. And there are answers so you can check your solutions. Um, well, basically, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.